All right, welcome back. So we're going to look at uh, a couple cool features. This is really more of a beginners to intermediate uh, feature, but we're going to look at uh, track monitoring. And so it's not really well uh, presented on this main page, but if you actually go to this page here, you're going to see a thing that says monitor right here. And that says monitor, and you got the status. It defaults to auto, by the way. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it from the standpoint on this page here as opposed to the other page. But uh, I guess that's the Kai's fault for not labeling that. Oh, well. Actually, it's their fault for a lot of things. So we're going to go in, and I'm going to uh, add a sound. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain monitor first, and then we're going to go to the next, uh, the next thing I want to show you. So... Uh, so the way I'm going to show it to you is a real sort of basic way. I'm going to play this. I'm going to switch this from auto to merge. And it's going to go off. I hear nothing now. And then I have it on in. So what the heck is the difference with all four of these modes? Well, we know the difference on this one when I have it on off. We know that. So when it's off, we don't hear anything. But what is exactly is happening and so so here we're going to go over obviously i got a sound down here and i can't hear it and so uh as a matter of fact if i turn record arm off i just want to make this known that record has nothing to do with anything about hearing anything it's just a matter of whether you're going to uh record any events on the actual track when it comes to midi so let's just go back and cycle through so we know. Auto, merge, and then off. So remember, auto does actually rely on record because it's a it's a fusion of two functions. That's why it's called auto for monitoring. All right, so, so let's just put it on record and let's just see, get to the point. Do you think because I can't hear anything, that means I can't record anything. Let's find out. So, obviously you saw me record something, but I couldn't hear it on its way in. But we can certainly hear it on its way out. So this hopefully the light bulb sort of goes off and, and we can understand that monitoring, whether it's inside coming out or outside coming in, that these buttons actually make a difference. So what would be the opposite of off? Well, in might actually be that because in a sense, can I we know we got MIDI in here, but do you think I have it on in monitor? We can hear anything? No. We know it's, but we know it's, there's stuff on on the MIDI track. So what in is, it's only going to allow you to hear what's coming in. It's not going to let anything that's coming, you're not going to be able to hear anything that's actually coming out. Even though, even there's, if there's something existing on the track. So, for example, you had the little chord thing I have already in there. We can't hear it. But I can certainly hear stuff now. So I'm going to do it overdub. And it's going to allow me to hear only what I put in without monitoring what's actually already on the track. So I'm going to do overdub. Now, if I take it off... This, on auto status, just so we can take it out of in. You can hear both passages. Right? So there you go. So let's just erase whatever I have on here. Okay, so I got nothing on here. Okay, so let's go back. Keep it on this page so we can see what's going on relative to the other tracks. Now, uh, now I have this on merge. So remember, even if I have this rec record off or arm off, you can still 
hear it. Remember, this is kind of, some people can use this as an actual playing instrument, so we don't always have to have things on record if we don't intend on recording at all. All right, so what if I have it on merge? Why is it that if I have it on this empty track and I have nothing on it, why is it that I can hear the sound on from track one? And I'm on track two, right? So if I, if I put this uh, human bell on here, it's going to play the human bell. It should. Remember, if it's on auto, you do want to have record on, but... But I can hear that and the first sound. So if I record off and I put it on, just merge. Okay. I can hear both of them. If I put on another, a third empty track, this track is on merge, this is on merge, I'm on the third track. I should be able to hear the first two, right? Which you'll be properly correct. Okay, so if I load another sound, um, we'll do. We'll load Harla, Harlequin, and I'll put it on this third track, and I'll just put it on. Uh, I'll just put it on in status. So we'll put it over here so you can see what's going on in. So as you can see, you can hear you can hear all of them to this to some extent. So that would mean if I put this on merge two as well, it doesn't matter what track I have enabled out of all three of them, it's going to actually trigger all of them because they're all on merge. Now, as far as recording the MIDI data, if I want MIDI data to be recorded on all the tracks, I have to make sure, respectively, that each track has the record arm. So if I hit Shift, they're all going to not only... They're, they're all going to record. So to make an example out of this, I'm going to take one off, and we know we can hear all three of them. All right. But when I record, it's only going to record MIDI data on the first two. Okay. So we heard all three play, but you're only going to hear these two play back because that's the only two that actually have recorded MIDI data on. Okay. So that takes care of, of merge. Okay. So we're going to just erase uh, these couple tracks here. So I'm going to erase those. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off of merge. We know what off, in, auto mean. And in. So we, now we know sort of what all those mean. So now let's go take a look All right, at this, um, which we're going to go into. In this case, we're going to go back to the main page. Okay, so we got everything set to normal. I'm going to pull out this eyeball, and you're going to be presented with this little uh, individual track uh, and mixer track view. And so we're going to concentrate on the... Um, one, two, three, fourth icon to the from the from the left. One, two, three, four. It's got the little bars, and this is all about MIDI. And I'm gonna only deal with this little box here underneath ports. Okay. For today. And so if I have now I think of this as more of a like a post production, mid production uh trick. So I'll also record something. Okay, 
So I've already got something on here, and someone says, okay, you know what? I'd like to hear uh, that combined with something else. It's, it's just not big enough, whatever. So he said, okay, well, I'll go copy the track, and I'm going to layer it. And it's already recorded, so I'll just copy it to another track and assign it to the sound. Well, there's another way you can do that, which is on track two, I have this sound called Human Bell. There's no MIDI data on it, but maybe we can do this. We can send that port to play what's on uh, the track, what I've titled as B, which has got the human bell. So now what's going to happen, it's going to play the electric piano track, and it's also going to trigger the sound that's on track two, which is human bell, with the MIDI from this track. So we're going to hear both. Hear that? Pretty pretty cool, right? So this is something that I, I would consider like you would do something real quick and the track is already done and you wanted an electric piano, piano layer, uh, and you want to just test it out. Easily, easy to do, as you saw right here. You just create another track and point the source track to another destination track, and then you got yourself an actual layer. And that pretty much is is pretty easy to do. You don't have to go through the extra step and record another MIDI track. Now you can, and the reason why you would, because maybe a certain sound might react to the recorded MIDI that's previously on there, and you might want to sort of dial that down uh, in a sense because of the way the velocities were done originally in the sample session. So there's other reasons why you'd want to actually take that MIDI and have it separate to track to trigger another sound. But in general, this is an easy way to stack. So, um, and then one last, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to show this today. But this, um, we're going to go over this on another, on another video because this has more to do with... Um, control filtering uh but the just know that the mpc can do that and it's and it's located on the actual midi track level so again hopefully it's one last thing so let's just go and let's go back and i'm going to erase this and we'll just kind of put things back So, if you think you're going to do, so with drums, same thing. I got a track here. Okay, same thing. I'm going to go put, uh, like... Plus 808, which sounds like this. Right? The source track. Send this out to the next track, which is F, by the way. So here we go. So that's another, again, cool feature to use if you want to add a little something. Uh, it's just one more option that you might have. Okay, so now this completes the video. So until next time, peace out.